Stevenson. Do you, you know, in in these in these interviews, I never I never ever ever plug my my own stuff. But it happens that you're talking about something that is so near and dear that I that I can't help it. I the chapter that I write for the the the, the BCSC optics textbook, right. which is not an ASCR's product. Sorry, guys. Um, is on IOL optics. So this is we're going to be talking about my thing, and nothing warms my heart more than more than this. So you um, gave a wonderful talk, an interesting study on um, uh, on spherical aberration in different IOLs and what it means clinically with regard to IOL position. Anyway, it's not for me to talk about. Right. Let me have you tell me what the study was and what the question was that the study asked. Well, I think this, uh, this is for everything we do in ophthalmology, in, in optics, in, in doing uh, intraocular lenses. We never know what the healing of the eye is going to do. So we know that during certain healing mechanisms of the eye that the lens is going to be decentered somewhat or tilted somewhat. So how does that affect the quality of our image? So, you know, everybody is all hyped up on, you know, uh, the eye is positive spherical aberration of a 0 0.26, um, on the, average. On average, yeah. um, the you know a uh, aspheric lenses have no spherical aberrations. Uh, negative ones are supposed to you know uh, cro you know cancel out what the natural cornea is. So, but what does that mean for me? Well. Basically, what I wanted to do, I've been using the MX60T and E since they've come into existence that Bosch and Lohm makes, but I wanted to compare them to a simulation that compared 2.6 degrees of tilt, 0 0.4 millimeters of decentration, and a residual astigmatism of a quarter, and what that did to the quality of our image. So we simulated that and um, measured... How, how, did you, how did you simulate it? We simulated it with an artificial eye with mm -hmm. 0 0.28 millimeters, uh, or 0 0.28 of spherical positive spherical aberration on the cornea, made the pupil about six millimeters. Then we um, we chromatically um, measured the vision, and we made the 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 quality of vision as good as we could, or the uh, or simulate as good as we could. And then what we did is we looked at um, a simulation of the E or an F, if you will, or whatever the the image, and we and we looked at it at tilt, decentration and with residual astigmatism um, in the scotopic and photopic uh, states, or meso meso mesopic and, and photopic states. And what we realized is that the zero aberration, or the, S, uh, or the, the um, spherical aberration of zero, which is what the MX60T induces, none, it's this equal power from center to edge. So if it is tilted or decentered, the quality of your image is much better than the quality of your image with the two negative spherical aberration lenses. That's that's interesting, and I and I understand I understand why that would be true if the lens is is decentered. But why why would it be helpful if it's if it's tilted? I mean, you're you're inducing some astigmatism of oblique incidence anyway. Right. Well, and and what we like to what we what I was hoping to accomplish with this is just to show you what the image would be even if there was a tilt. We're going to induce some tilt with healing, and 0 0.4 millimeters of tilt is fairly significant. But because of the the way this lens is designed, with the same power from center to edge, if you're on axis with this lens. Tilting it a bit does not change the quality of the patient's vision, and that's essentially what you know. The that's what my my hypothesis was, and that's what my my findings were. That this lens um, certainly was much more forgiving with any kind of tilt. Oh, really, really, really interesting. Really interesting. Um, how, what 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 outcome measure did did you use to judge what the quality of the vision was? Um, w what we used was just simulation of, of, a, a, of a letter and to show how clear that letter was. And we did it with um, MTFs and uh, uh, the, okay. the chromatic mirror, you know, imaging. Uh, really, uh, really, really interesting. So um, I, the, the way that, that you set this up sounds like it, it would be representative of the vast majority of patients that we do uh, with uh, uh, eyes that are naive to, to corneal surgery. Would you have any more concern if you're doing this in someone who's had, let's say, myopic LASIK, where 
the, the, the positive spherical aberration for the eyes is going to be even higher. Absolutely, and that is another study in itself. However, um, with my, um, you, you know, this only confirmed a lot of the questions that I had. The reason that I use an aspheric non you know, induction of any spherical aberration is because when we have uh, a, a cornea and now, you know, 40 or 50% of my patients are post-refractive of some sort. So I don't want to induce anything else. So if they're used to a cornea that is a certain way, I'm not inducing anything else by putting a, a, an aspheric lens in the eye. So I'm not adding fuel to the fire. And, and I'm not trying to negate it because then I'm going to battle with what's normal for that patient or what they're used to, their brain is used to. So I think that from a, you can extrapolate from this only. You'd have to do it with a, um, corneas that have been um, altered by refractive surgery. But yeah. I think it, it gives us the same uh, kind of answer. The, the more pristine the optic is, the more pristine the, the, the images, the better the patient's outcome and the better the patient's satisfaction. And of course, that's what we're after, the best satisfaction of the patient. Yeah, so, so it's really <clears throat> um, um, interesting. And, and I, uh, I, I agree, I think everyone would agree with you that the only thing that, that matters is the sort of, is, is the visual, actually the only thing that matters is the patient's satisfaction. But I mean, the only metric that, that matters is the, is the visual outcome and that that spherical aberration is is a sort of a of a of a mixed thing, and I think that it's it's probably um, not a, not a great metric in the sense that um, well, patient spherical aberration, although it, it it to some extent degrades image quality, spherical aberration actually gives you some help a, and an yep. extended depth depth of absolutely focus. And I mean, you have this little edafi flavory thing if sure. you have some sure some and and with this is a monofocal lens but we have we have seen and i presented at ascrs the defocus curves on this lens right. that give you good intermediate and near um and we weren't expecting it because of the spherical a, yeah. you know zero spherical aberration yeah, so, so this can be an added plus to yeah, anything. No, this is a great study because yeah i mean as as as, as i as i say i mean it's that there are it's a kind of a, of a of a false metric, and the outcome measure that you use that makes much more clinical sense. Great. D, this is really, really, really um, interesting stuff. I mean, for everybody, this is this is interesting and 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 relevant. For me, this is the sort of thing that I that I think about when I'm supposed to be, you know, having an actual life. <laughs> uh, uh, I won't want you to thank. Uh, I want to thank you for 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 bringing this this interesting news to us. And as always, for being so very generous with you, with your time with me today. Thank you so much. <laughs>